What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a group review of a few Dino Squad blasters by Nerf. In this video, I'm reviewing three different blasters. The Rex Rampage, which is a semi-auto flywheel magazine-fed blaster, very similar to a Strife. The Tricera Blast, a hammer action three-shot blaster. And the Stego Smash, a single-shot spring power blaster. The new Dino Squad series doesn't have tactical rails, tactical attachments, tactical anything. It's goofy, animated, light-hearted, gimmicky blasters, sort of like what you'd expect out of a 90s Nerf blaster. Retro, silly, goofy, light-hearted, and fun. We haven't seen this out of Nerf in a while. Let's get into the review. I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends brings console level gaming to your phone. Explore tons of champion combinations and master your tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. There are hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 500 champions with unique skills. Mix, match, customize, and build your team exactly the way that you want to to raid your way. I mean, come on, check out this Duchess Lilitu. She's a legendary champion from Demon's and she has Veil buff, which effectively paints her teammates clear, bro. Tactics. Invisible champions. And of course, Valerie, a rare champion from the Banner Lords. Her armor doesn't really look that effective, but check out her awesome skills. <laughs> And I really like the autoplay feature, which allows your characters essentially to play on their own. This allows me to feel more like the coach of the squad rather than one of the fighters or players. And Raid recently released an epic update, the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. On top of that, Raid recently released more champions. They have over 500 champions in the game now. And each champion can be customized. The customization is ridiculous. Better than the Modulus series, bros. Download Raid on your mobile device or PC with the link in my description and receive one clan boss key, one energy refill, one day XP boost, five mystery shards, 50 gems, 500,000 silver, and a free champion, the Executioner. This is the cool champion you'll get for free. You'll find these extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Thank you again to this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. If you'd like to download this game, check the links in the description box below. Now we return to the regularly scheduled content. Included with the Rex Rampage is the blaster, magazine, darts, and instructions. The Rex Rampage requires four AA batteries and are installed as shown. Included with the Tricera Blast is the blaster, darts, and instructions. Included with the Stego Smash is the blaster and darts. This is a group review of all three blasters, but I'll go one by one. So external overview of the Rex Rampage starting up at the front. There's no in-strike barrel lug. Seriously, no tactics at all. Up front, we have a very narrow sling attachment point. It's only gonna be compatible with certain types of slings though. Moving back, we have these super intimidating teeth. I really dig them. They're in there. It's not just paint. You can actually feel them. Because what's more intimidating than a blaster or a gun? A freaking dinosaur. <laughs> As cool as it looks, there's nothing to open, to control, or to manipulate. But up front, it is a pretty comfortable place to hold your front hand. Up top, we have a scope that is built into the blaster. This is not removable. There's no in-strike rail underneath it. And interestingly, when you look through the scope, like half of your vision is obstructed by the T-Rex's the head up here. But it is a fairly large diameter scope, so you actually can see through it, even though half of it is obstructed by this plastic up here. On the left-hand side right here, we have an access door. You can flick this door open to get in there. I did not experience any jams and malfunctions, but sometimes you need the access door to get in there to clear out crummy darts. Down to the magazine well, to remove the magazine, you hit the magazine release, which is inside the trigger guard right here, and the magazine slides right out. The included magazine holds 10 nerfy leap darts. It works just like the other banana mag from the Modulus series, but it's not the same as the Modulus mag. It is a little bit different, and the coloring is a little different too. But this magazine well is compatible with all of the nerf magazines that I tried, including the drum mags. Again, the magazine release is inside the trigger guard here, and behind that is the primary trigger. This is a mechanically operated semi-auto trigger system. It feels similar to a Strife, but there's very low friction on this trigger, and the return spring is slightly lighter than other blasters. So the trigger pull is very light, I think this would be very welcoming to a younger, smaller, weaker hand. That of like a younger child. The whole dino squad is sort of targeted at a younger audience. So primary trigger is designed pretty well. Below that is the rev trigger. Of course, you want to hold that for a moment before pulling the primary trigger. Now down to the grip. Overall, the grip is designed pretty well, ergonomically speaking, but it is pretty obviously designed for a smaller, younger hand. It feels a little bit more narrow and a little bit smaller than a lot of elite blasters on the market right now. So if you're a big guy, fully grown human, I would not recommend this one. I'd, I'd recommend a Strife or an Adventure Force Spectrum. But for the target demographic, the younger people, 
I think this grip will work out just fine. And above the grip on the left-hand side is the battery tray. This blaster runs on four AA batteries. And back to the stock, we have some dart storage built into the stock right here. On each side, you can hold five darts. The retention here is pretty strong, but don't store darts in here or they will be permanently dented. It's not gonna make a huge deal firing these creased darts out of a flywheel powered blaster, but if you put these into a springer, you might see decreased performance. But the retention works pretty well. These darts hold in there very well. And that concludes the stock overview. This is a permanent stock. It's not adjustable or removable. That is an external overview of the Rex Rampage. It's essentially a strife. Now to the Tricera Blast. This is a spring powered hammer action blaster with a three shot smart AR system up front. External overview, no inch strike barrel lug, no tactics of any kind. To load the barrels, you can just pull down on this barrel shroud like that. This thing serves absolutely no function, but this whole blaster is pretty gimmicky. And when you lower that, you can front load your darts like that. The blaster holds three darts. It fires them one at a time using a smart AR system. It is not a shotgun. After you have that loaded up, you can shut the barrel shroud like that. Moving back, you have these cool little horns and whatever this is. I don't know dinosaur anatomy, so I don't know what that is, but I think it's a dinosaur part. All I know is I think they're going for the intimidation factor. A three shot primary is really not that intimidating though, Hasbro, come on. We make it look like a dinosaur, we can trick people though. Shut up, Coop. <laughs> Moving back is the priming handle. This is a hammer action blaster, so you can pull down like that to prime. The strength required is what you should expect out of most Nerf Elite blasters on the market. And the prime is pretty smooth. It feels very similar to a hammer shot priming action. And below that is the trigger. The trigger pull feels pretty standard. This blaster does not have slam fire. Moving back to the grip. It's a pretty long grip, but it's pretty thin and narrow, very welcoming to a younger hand. And again, the whole dino squad is aimed at younger people. It's a super slanted grip. Some people like it, some people don't, but it's designed pretty well. I'm a pretty big dude and I can use this blaster pretty well, but I think it's definitely going to work with younger people as well. Down below, we have this gigantic sling mount right here. And in the stock, we have more dart storage. We hold six darts on each side of the stock. It has the same dart retention mechanism design as the Rex Rampage's dart storage. So it holds the darts very well, but you are going to crimp the darts permanently if you leave them stored in there for a long period of time. But the stock is not adjustable or removable. So that's the external overview of the Tricera Blast. And lastly, we have the Stego Smash. This is a spring powered single shot blaster, very simple. External overview up front, we do not have an in-strike barrel lug, just a single barrel right here. To load that, you can just load it like every other single shot blaster ever. Below the barrel, we have dart storage, enough to hold four darts built into the blaster. Up top, we have these goofy looking dinosaur looking things, but no in-strike tactical rails, no tactics of any kind anywhere. Moving back to the trigger, the trigger pull is pretty standard. This blaster does not have slam fire, I have to say it. And moving back, we have the priming handle. Now the design of this priming handle is kind of weird. It's not really utilitarian based. It looks pretty cool, but it's kind of a weird thing to grab onto. But this whole blaster is a weird thing to grab onto. So I think that's just the theme. <laughs> but the prime weight or the strength required is in line with other Nerf Elite blasters on the market. So other than it feeling just a little weird, it works just fine. Now down to the grip. This is a super small grip. If you're an adult, I would really not recommend it. Again, this whole line is designed for younger people. And for that, I think it'll be more comfortable. This feels more like a Busby blaster. Busby consistently has really, really small grips. Considering its size though, it is surprising comfortable. I can get my hand on it. It's just pretty cramped. It is not as cramped and uncomfortable as a Doomlands blaster because those are just really awful for big people. And no slinger lanyard mount down here, which is worth noting. That is an external overview of the Stego Smash. Now I'll show you all three blasters firing. Shooting standard blue Nerf Elite darts. standard blue Nerf Elite darts.
firing analysis, starting with the Rex Rampage. Operating the Rex Rampage was pretty fun. I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with this blaster, and it operates pretty much like a strife. Operating the Tricera Blast was kind of annoying, but it's really not an efficient battle effective blaster, and that's just not something I'm gonna like. This is just such an unnecessary step, it would be easier if you just ripped this whole thing off and you just ignored it. But I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with this blaster. It operates as expected. Same with the Stego Smash. It operates exactly like every single shot blaster ever does. It's just a single shot blaster, what else do you want me to say? To compare all three, I put them up on my chronograph. First, the Rex Rampage achieved an average velocity of 69 giggity feet per second shooting Nerf Elite darts, which is practically right on the Nerf Elite par of 70 FPS. Next, the Tricera Blast achieved an average velocity of 63 feet per second, which is pretty low, and just like a lot of other smart AR systems, the first barrel shoots significantly harder than the last barrel. At 63 FPS is an average of all three barrels, though, shooting about 20 darts. And lastly, this Stego Smash achieved an average velocity of 64 feet per second, which is a little below the 70 FPS par out of Elite Primaries, but as a pistol, 64 FPS is pretty average. That is all of the objective information I can provide on these blasters. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, I'm impressed and kind of surprised that Nerf is reverting back to its roots, these goofy, lighthearted, quirky blasters. These are the types of blasters that I grew up on, these interesting, weird blasters that transformed and did gimmicky nonsense things. Because as a younger Nerfer, it's not all about completely destroying your friends as efficiently as possible. So it's nice to see goofy, lighthearted blasters that are obviously designed to have fun with rather than destroy other humans with. Kind of the polar opposite of the whole Rival series. Now to the question, to buy or not to buy. If you're a performance-oriented Nerfer, I don't see any reason to purchase any of these blasters. The Tricera Blast is super inefficient, bulky, and just not effective at all. The Stego Smash is just unnecessarily big and just is not going to fit into a holster because of its awesome mohawk here. And the Rex Rampage is just an oversized Strife. If you want something like this, buy a Strife. Or an Adventure Force Spectrum if you want better performance. But performance-oriented Nerfers can look at these blasters and tell right off the get-go they are not marketed towards them. But if you're a regular viewer on my channel and you've watched this far into a review, on blasters that you have no interest in purchasing. Thanks for your viewership, bro. Seriously. <laughs> but if you're a younger, lighthearted nerfer and you're looking to have some fun with some plinking toys, you can consider these blasters. So kind of a mixed opinion. They did what they set out to do. They made some lighthearted, fun blasters that look super intimidating and kind of fun. Is anybody actually going to buy them? I have no idea. But that's all of the information I can give you to help with an educated purchase decision. If you'd like to buy one of these, I'll put purchase links in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical.